know if how many of you have been to True North Health Center in California? Well, many of you have. So one of the things that they don't advertise because it always sells out every year is that they have an extravaganza that takes place the last two weeks of December where most of the doctors get the time off, most people don't fast, and you just have fun. And Chef AJ is usually the hostess of the most distance. Nothing but food demonstrations and great times and great lectures and great camaraderie. And there's usually 60 to 70 to 80 people there uh, that accommodate. It's a great time. So my wife and I went out there this past year to kind of promote membership in the NHA and to promote, ah, sir, they would like this warmed up a little bit in here. There you go. All right, it is done. All right, so we went out there and it was a great time. And uh, and most people weren't fasting, although there were two, a couple of remarkable people. Uh, there's a gal by the name of Susan Smith. Is Susan Smith in the house here right now? Susan Smith. So if ever you want to hear a great testimonial of someone, you seek out Susan Smith. We'll probably write up her story in Health Science because Susan Smith uh, was at True North Fast, was it there, was there for months, right? Was virtually, was legally blind. She now sees as wow. a result of her time at True North. And she's just a wonderful lady. She's right here in Akron. So she's Susan Smith before we leave. But she was fasting when we were out there. But one other guy was fasting that I didn't know, but I just sort of heard there was something called I Thrive that was on the internet. And there was this kind of heavy set guy that was talking about the, the, the scourge and the, and, the, and the plague of diabetes, obesity and diabetes. And he was doing this I Thrive series to, to bring people back. Uh, from that scourge, and he made it a mission to go all around the country and around the world interviewing the top specialists in the world on how you could do this. But what he really found was his true north was that true north. And he went to true north, and when we were out there, and everybody else was eating, and I don't know how he did this, but everybody else is eating, and he's coming to all the food demonstrations and all the meals, but he fasted at true north. I don't want to steal his thunder here because I'm sure he'll talk about it, but he fasted 32 days at true north. He is, if you watch the I Thrive series, which he'll talk about, this amazing documentary series, you will recognize, the, other than his smile, you will recognize the guy you see in the documentary. He really is a man on a mission to change the way America thinks about health. And fortunately, his mission is the NHA mission. We are really privileged to have with us the producer, the director of the I Thrive series, the one and only John McMahon. John Testing one, two, three. I got a green light. Nothing? Hello. I can probably speak without the mic at all. How are you guys doing? Good. Well. And you're eating well. Yeah. You guys got to tell me, what is it like coming to a, a major hotel chain, sitting at a restaurant, yeah. looking at a menu, and just being able to sit, order off the menu? Salt, oil, sugar, free. Awesome. Whole food, plant based, low fat, vegan. Awesome. It's, uh, I was having breakfast with Dr. Lim this morning, and he was saying, man, it's, it's surreal. And I said, it's a vision of the future. Wow. You know, it's a vision of the future. I, there are people out here that are making contacts with, with chefs and restaurants. I contacted the owner of my favorite Thai restaurant. And I sat down with her and I told her, she saw my journey. John, what are you doing? And I said, well, you cook. Will you cook stir fry with uh, no oil? You know, will you make these dishes for me, you know, and, and take out <clears throat> without any salt? Yes. And that's happening. That's happening all over. And uh, I just heard of some ladies here that they've got a group. What's the name of the group, Mark? Eat Smart Live Long. Eat Smart Live Long. Where are you guys? All right. So aren't you guys doing this? You're getting some restaurants? I'm meeting with the Thai gentleman on the, when I get back home. Right. And we used to go there. I haven't been since I've been to True North in January. Six months I haven't been there. 
Yeah. You were in January? I was there in January. I know. I was going to talk with you, and you look a whale of a lot better now. You are <laughs> <laughs> in pain, man. I, I, feel, I feel a lot better. Um, so yeah, the restaurant, the restaurant thing, that's a real thing, because, you know, part of my journey, uh, what I realize, I'm going to go into it a little bit. Yeah. All right. All right. So, part of my journey is not just about the food. I discovered that it was about connection. That's why I went to those meals. That's why I went to the cooking demonstrations when I was fasting. I didn't just stay locked up in my room because that isolation is what got me in this place in the first place, numbing out and thinking that the solution was, let me fix myself first, then I'll go out and re-engage the world when something traumatic happened to me and I disconnected. So <clears throat> we want to be able to go out and sit at restaurants and enjoy a beautiful ambient atmosphere, get a few of your friends together, approach the owner, the manager, the chef, and just say, hey, I've got friends. And if you don't have friends, make them. I've proven over and over again. There are people around that want to live like you, they want to be like you, and they want to eat like you. So don't tell me, don't, don't make me come to your city and find another person like you. Because I did a Facebook Live at three o'clock in the morning because I was dedicated to prepping for a trip that I was going on the next day and I was not going to be caught flat-footed flying all day long and tempted to eat. So I was sitting there, I'm tired, I'm cooking, I thought, and I need to share this with the community too. And <clears throat> so the people that got on was like, oh, well it's from London, and it was from Australia, and, and uh, various parts of Europe. And there was, there, was these, there was two people from Cornwall, England, and I was talking to them about the same thing. And they didn't know about each other. And I said, hey, look, you guys are both Cornwall. And then there was another from England. They were about 60 miles away. It connected all three of them. So you guys go out and get together and support each other. The connection is the biggest piece. And that's what I learned um, from my very last interview with Dr. Dean Ornish, Lifestyle Medicine. It was a month. It was October 12th last year. It was just a month before I had to have nine DVDs, nine document, not one documentary, you know, not one DVD. I had to have nine done, produced, in the bag, uploaded, ready to go, pressed, printed. And here I was interviewing my last interview on October 12th. And this had to go live November 14th. And I couldn't get, I wanted to get Dr. Dean Ornish engaged. I wanted to, you know, bite, you know, really bite down on all this bad stuff that's out there. You, you know, you're bad and wrong, and this is good and right. I could not get him to do it. And all he wanted to talk about was lifestyle, love, and connection and support. And uh, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't even get it then. Uh, it's a story I, I could tell you later, but um, he was kind of angry at me. <clears throat> it was kind of cranky. It was a cranky moment. It was the second time I interviewed him. The first time I interviewed him, I forgot to turn the camera on record. <laughs> Which I did not tell him. <laughs> After I went, went through the whole interview, and then I went back, and I saw, I, I looked at the camera, and there was no record. Because I was a one-man band. I had no crew. I had no producer. I didn't have an assistant making my flight arrangements. Nothing. And I knew nothing about filming or photography or anything like that. Never touched a video camera before. I just went with a friend of mine, introduced me to another friend, they gave me a three hour lesson, and I was on the road interviewing 55 experts across the country in like three months, determined to make this thing happen. But here I am, what am I gonna do, Dr. Dean Ornish? Man, he's so, I got him on the calendar once, how am I ever gonna get him again? Somehow, and I just, I just called his assistant and made up some story about, oh, the media got all kind of messed up and it didn't, the recording was all fuzzy, and could we schedule it again? So I got a schedule, so I'm there, and I'm trying to get him to engage, and he won't engage, and all he wants to talk about is this lovey, touchy, feely stuff, and I didn't get it. I didn't get it until I got to True North, but I'm gonna back up now about this story and kind of walk you through where I was and how I got there, and then uh, how I got out, and how now I'm not missing that piece anymore, and uh, it's about honor 
It's about love. It's about self-love and connection relating to other people and the way that we you know, need to develop emotional intelligence. So um, just bear with me while I deal with the technology here. You know, my degrees in computer science. <laughs> All right, let's see if this will work. My defense is that I use a Mac. All right. Oh, so, so cute. How does a guy go from being on top of the world with a perfect life, high tech, super successful internet millionaire to zero to this? Oh. Selling popcorn 10 years later, having circled around, lost everything, been homeless. and uh, just gave up wandering around like Moses, you know, in the wilderness for 10 years. That is a whole other story, and I'm not gonna bore you with that. But I'm gonna talk about the journey coming back. This is how you, this is how you get there, guys. Eggs Benedict, my favorite meal. A little mimosa, you know, some cheese and potatoes on the side, you know. Oh, but does it stop there? No. Of course, you got to have dessert for breakfast, right? You have the waffles, right, and the sugar, and you know everything else that you see there. And this is what happens, okay? Pizza, sitting in front of the computer, eating by yourself. You know, I don't suggest eating by yourself. There's obesity and diabetes. It's a metabolic disorder that is gonna basically, it's gonna take over the world. Um, if you look at the statistics right now, people are really underestimating everything there is to know about diabetes. In fact, over half of people in America already have pre-diabetes. The standards are so, so poor for, for actually diagnosing diabetes and saying you've got pre-diabetes that, that it's, it's considered to be normal to be in a pre-diabetic state, okay? Um, I went through some tests that were very, very conservative. I won't, I won't hold this slide too long. That, these slides here. Yeah. The first slide was a toe. After six months of healing, I know I didn't want to show it to you before. It was across the whole bottoms of my feet. At the beginning of wanting to produce this documentary and try to make a change and change my own life, get to the bottom of everything, I was sitting in a, in a, around this bonfire and I was just holding my feet up, cruising, feeling good. I put them down, I was hanging out with my nephew, having fun, and we were running around to help, help somebody get stuck. They were stuck in the sand, dug them out, and finally got home at one o'clock in the morning, and I walk up to the to the door, you know, and I, the lights, porch lights on, and I look down, and my sandals are just covered in blood. And I thought, oh, I must step on something. You know, got inside, went in the tub, and washed them all off, all across the pads, like perfectly as I was holding my feet up for this fire. Second, third degree burns. Wow. Felt nothing. Wow. Okay, that was a wake up call. That was a real wake up call. In fact, my nephew grabbed a camera and I was just stunned in shock. You want to talk about facing reality and having ignored it for so long. It was such a shock. I was just, just standing there and there was blood all over the carpet where I'd walked around. And he was just, just yeah, trying to film this moment. And, uh, and it was just right there where I, it was just a real, real come to Jesus how serious this thing is. It boils you alive so slowly you don't even realize it. It's the, really that whole frog, you know, on the, on the pot cooking really slowly. Man, diabetes is like that. Obesity, that's, that's what it is. It just sneaks up on you and you, you get in this denial. You're like, how could you let yourself go like that? How could you, how did you get neuropathy so bad? How could you get a heart attack? How could you have hypertension? It, it happens imperceptibly slow and you sit there in denial and you boil alive. People are dying every day. Thousands of people are having their feet cut off every single day. And then this is, this is now the underlying cause for the top causes of death, cancer. 
Heart attacks. One out of every two people with diabetes diagnosed with type 2, they're going to die of a heart attack. Well, their first symptom, this is Neil Bernard talking now, their first, their first symptoms are, John, lights out. There's no second, there's no second chance, it's like lights out. That's 75% of the first symptoms of the heart attack. So, obviously, I survived. This is me on top of Half Dome a few weeks ago. Six months. So from basically, right there, that weight. I got up as high as 357 pounds. Six months ago, I was 312 pounds. And there I'm standing on top of Half Dome six months later. How many have hiked Half Dome before? How many have heard of it? It's from the Yosemite Valley in California. It's almost a 17 mile hike. And it rises 5,000 feet in elevation and it ends with a very, very steep, uh, double kind of steep rock climb that you scramble. Uh, and then there's cables that pull you up the last, last little bit of the way but it was really strenuous, especially with the advanced neuropathy that I had and still, and still have. But it's getting better. And you can see that in six months, I've lost 91 pounds. Wow. wow. So, so how did I get there? So back there, that's me getting ready on the beach to talk about, that's, that's me doing this intro to wanting to launch this this documentary series, a nine-part documentary series. I'm not satisfied with just doing one, you know, 90-minute or 60-minute documentary. I had to do, I had to do none. Um, and so, during that time, someone that you're going to see here really helped me out. I interviewed all all the people that you know. Um, I don't have to go into the names. Everybody: T. Colin Campbell, Caldwell Esselstyn. Um, and the whole Esselstyn family, and <laughs> Furman, and, and Goldhammer, and Dr. Lim, and, and it just, and, and everybody. And uh, while I was here at, at Dr. Furman's house, uh, he just he laid it out the home, in the only way that, that he could lay things out for you. You know, he says, you're going on the emergency plan, there's no more time for screwing around, this is what you've got to do, A, B, C, D. So I started off with doing very comprehensive, in-depth lab testing that included a four-hour, not a three-hour, two-hour, or a simple test, but a four-hour glucose insulin monitoring test with a whole bunch of other markers as well. Really see where I stood, and it wasn't pretty. That was, they drew about a pint of blood out just to do all the tests. And guess what? What's the next thing that I did? During shooting this entire documentary last year, interviewing these amazing people that you guys learned from, these experts, I still couldn't turn it around on my own. I would leave Caldwell Esselstyn home after having a meal made by Ann and eating there with Jane. And I would be going home right to the Burger King drive-thru. Now, how do you think that felt? You know, you feel guilt and shame, like, what is wrong with me? Am I so broken and stupid? So I did a whole episode on that feeling with Dr. Doug Lyle, episode six. Like, I'm, I'm insane, you know, what's wrong? I'm in the middle of this. Of all people, I should be able to do this. Well, I couldn't. So, and they make a special place for people like that. <laughs> <laughs> and what's that, what's the name of that place? <laughs> So, I, you guys will not recognize this place, but this is a place in Santa Rosa. What do I do the day that I check into True North? Last meal. Last meal. Last meal. The Omelette Express. This time I had my dessert first. Does that person look very happy? That's, that's not me. This is me. 
<laughs> now I'm at True North. So I had breakfast at the Omelette Express, and then I went directly and checked in with Leia at True North, and <laughs> my next meal was that. And I was supposed to fast the next day. So I didn't do the whole, hey, yeah, eat clean for a couple of weeks, come to True North. Man, I just pushed it right up to the limit. And that was my first meal, and I wasn't too happy, and I was really nervous about what, how am I going to beat these cravings? Is it going to go away? I don't think I can do it. I'm going to have this huge dopamine crash and be all have anxiety because you know I'm not going to have all this you know high stimulus food. I was really worried about the fast, but you know what? I started to go to the I started to go to the cooking demonstrations even though I was fasting. I went to the meals to connect and socialize with the people that are there. Many of them are here, right here, right here. They remember me from January and February. And of course, learn how to cook, kinda. But uh, uh, she tried her best. <laughs> so the basics, right? We know the basics. Farm fresh. This is how I got this in six months. So this is <laughs> this is about the best I can do. I can roast some squash. I can steam some Brussels sprouts and steam some greens. And I could remember about a quarter of what Dr. Furman told me. All I just pictured in this place, I just know greens and beans. I couldn't even remember the whole G-bombs, right? I just knew some of that greens and beans. Yeah, okay, I need needed walnuts and a DHA and flaxseed sometimes, no. And, you know, a couple of things, but I kept it simple. I kept it simple and that was the key. And five months later, I was able to show up at my best friend's wedding looking like that. Yeah. Wow. wow. I, wanted to do, I wanted him to be proud of his best friend. And you guys that have been there know that feeling. You don't want to show up. You don't want to engage. The last thing you want to do is go to a wedding. <laughs> um, but I did it and that feels great. And you know what? They prepared, they prepared a gourmet vegan meal to be served to me when I was at the wedding. Also, vegan wine. <laughs> so, there it is. Lost in the wilderness for 10 years, finally woke up and decided that I wanted to live. My friend kept trying to get me to go to True North. He kept trying to get me to change. He kept trying to get me to adopt these principles. He finally quit. He said, John, I care about you more than you care about yourself. I'm not going to call you anymore, ask you what you ate. I'm not going to give you a hard time. I'm not going to pressure you anymore. I give up. You've got to decide, do you want to live? You know, when he asked me that question, <laughs> what shocked me was I didn't have an immediate answer. I thought, do you want to live? And I was like, I don't know. And I realized that I'd been slowly killing myself for the last 10 years. And man, I, I better figure out whether I wanted to live or to die because there was no in-between. There's no on the fence with this. You're, I, was, I was killing myself, okay? Any moment I could have had a heart attack. I had triglyceride levels high as 2,170. I already had one heart attack. I didn't even go to the hospital. You guys know about diabetics. They don't present those kind of symptoms um, like normal, normal people do. You discover it later. You know, when you get an EKG, and they say, oh, you've had an event. You're like, what the is an event? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's sober. Do you want to live? So, how many people have been on this path for a long time? You feel like you've got it wired. 
Yeah. How many of you are still struggling a little bit? Yeah. How many of you know people that are struggling and you, you want to desperately help them? Yeah. Well, it's not just all this expert information to jam down people's throat like a fire hose. I, I want to urge you to connect with that friend or connect with yourself in a way that you find out if you really want to live and why and really consider that question deeply. Because that will help you establish the bright lines. That will help you when, when you've got a lot of pressure and stress. That will help you when you you know, or at the checkout stand and you want to pick up that chocolate bar, you know, or you're getting gas and you go in and you want to get that soda or that sitting there and get a banana instead. And then you have to know what your why is and really say, I want to live. Um, I kind of want to show you just a little bit of, of the journey here. If this, if this works, it's the trailer for the documentary series. Just hold on. Let's see if this works. Can you guys see it? Yeah. It's been called the Black Death of Our Times. Its rapid spread across the globe has astonished governments, scientists, and doctors worldwide. It has just risen to become the number three killer in America, and it's on its way to becoming the number one killer worldwide. Diabetes and obesity. We used to know it as the disease of our grandparents. Now we know it as the disease of our children. The shocking 20% of our children are now obese, making them five times more likely to get diabetes. And did you know? Two out of three of us with diabetes will die of a heart attack. It's the number one cause of blindness and lower limb amputation, and a leading cause of Alzheimer's, kidney failure, and death by stroke. Listen to this. Out of every two people watching this right now, one of us already has diabetes or pre-diabetes, and 70% of us don't even know it. Yes, it's bound to touch all our lives. You, me, our grandparents, our best friends, our spouses, and especially our children and grandchildren. And as if the physical suffering is not enough, diabetes and obesity are often accompanied by depression, shame, and isolation. Once you've fallen into this emotional black hole, it's often very difficult to find your way out. Some lose the will to live. So, is it even possible to protect yourself and your family? And what can you do to rise above all these shocking statistics? Natural hygiene. Yes. You can prevent and reverse diabetes in a way that you don't know have. I've seen it with my own eyes time and time again. It can keep your family safe when you have the free information we reveal to you in this breathtaking documentary series. I Thrive, rising from the depths of diabetes and obesity. Featuring over 55 world-renowned experts, including scientists, doctors, researchers, plus dozens of inspiring survivors who will share critical information with you about the true solutions to these demoralizing diseases. You'll discover how to prevent and reverse diabetes and obesity, and not just survive, but thrive without using toxic, disease-causing medicines that have simply become part of the problem. Hi, my name's John and I'm 53 years old. I've got type 2 diabetes and I'm morbidly obese. Not anymore. I'm so excited to share this talking series with you because I don't want what happened to me to happen to you. You see, when I started on this journey to find answers and make the docu series, I didn't know if I'd live long enough to see it go live to the world. I've been lucky enough to survive one diabetes heart attack and the next could come at any moment, but I heard stories about people with diabetes who reversed it and were thriving again. I wondered could it couldn't be true. I was sick true. and tired of feeling helpless in this battle, and I had to find out. I thought if I could just help one child out there prevent or reverse diabetes or obesity just one, my journey will be worth it. And so I set off as a one-man camera crew on an epic whirlwind adventure, the 
against my doctor's orders, but followed my heart. And the strangest thing happened. It was as if I was being guided. Soon, I found myself hot on the trail of new scientific discoveries and cutting edge treatments. What I found is breathtaking and life-saving. I met people like Deborah, whose whole family was dying of diabetes, and who had been told all her life she died too. All her and aunts and uncles and moms she all died of diabetes. And she wasn't alone. I had to know who were these people and what were their secrets. I met people who struggled with their weight with food addiction all their lives and were suddenly free from it. I started to get the feeling there's an uprising going on. People taking their lives back. It's cool to be vegan now. surviving, but thriving <laughs> and living long, joyous lives. You're about to meet these people too. You're about to feel what I felt and to know what I know. And it's going to change your life for the better. So, this November 14th, join us on an epic journey across America as we talk to brilliant doctors. So, that was basically the journey that I went on that whole time, I was, I was that weight, I was overweight, and um, I was wearing those shoes to protect, to elevate my, the tops of my feet that were burned. And I almost got osteomyelitis, went to the emergency room when I was in North Carolina. One person I was interviewing was an emergency room doctor. I said, John, look at your feet really quick while you're here. Looks at him, says, dude, you gotta go to the emergency room right now. Yeah, this is this is this is all black, black, black hole. You, you gotta you gotta you gotta see this could be if this hits the marrow, you're you're done. And you know, even that didn't even really sink in when he told me that. Of course I went, of course, you know, took care of course I was there till one o'clock in the morning and x rays and everything like that. And no, it hadn't got to the bone, but just recently I was getting fitted for some shoes to do a climb. And this lady told me a story about a diabetic friend of hers that had two pinholes. In, in the bottom of her feet. Two small pinholes, a pin had wedged its way and worked its way all the way up and she never even felt it. And her HMO was slow in processing paperwork and getting her the right antibiotics and getting this thing looked at and taken care of. And before you know it, boom, they had to cut her knee off right here. She had gotten infected, salmonella poisoning. They had a, this lizard in the house, a pet, and it got this bacteria in there that quick. We didn't stop there. They couldn't stop the infection, she died. So it's very, very, very serious. So how are your feet now? Uh, the the burns are healed. They took about nine months to heal. The podiatrist wanted to do skin grafts, and I just wanted to see if it would finally heal. And they finally closed up after about nine months. That's the burns. But the neuropathy, I did a lot of damage with neuropathy, uh, letting it go, and that's slowly. As you guys know, what comes down when we eat like this? Inflammation. So man, our joints move, our fingers move, our feet and ankles, we feel much better, right? So that's all super improved. But the neuropathy is gonna be, it's gonna keep me honest. It's gonna keep me on this road of slowly reversing and remyelinating you know, my nerves and seeing what kind of recovery I can have. But that didn't stop me from getting up, uh, getting up half dome, and it's not stopping me from climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in November. Oh, wow. and, uh, and, and climbing up the Emmons Glacier route of uh, Mount Rainier on my birthday in a month, in July 28th. Wow. 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 What, what time is it? You've got five more minutes. Okay. Yeah. So, in between climbing major mountains, what are you doing to keep yourself fit? I train in the gym, and that's one thing I wanted to to, add, to bring into the light here. Weight training is really important. I do cross training, I do cross functional training, I do a lot of balance work with my trainer that's trying to reintegrate my my nervous system, like top to bottom and left to right, because it's all it's all cattywampus. You know, neuropathy is not just oh I've got numb feet. It's like slowly becoming a paraplegic, and you're losing motor control. The brain area that's communicating with that area in your body is atrophying. All that has to get all reconnected again to the extent that's possible. So, um, now the other thing is, man, you just stay, you figure out how to make this diet work. And I, I just, I picture this plate, Dr. Dr. Furman, it's burned into my, back of my head through my retina, you know, greens and beans. I just have this, I just see <laughs> greens all the time, you know? And I need legumes, and I know the rest I can fill in with some non-starchy vegetables and 
whatever it is, and, and you just you just figure it out and make it work. But you know what? I've slipped. You know, I my my big downfall is chocolate. I've, I've discovered that chocolate is a real toughy for me. But despite that, I've gotten back up and I've gotten back on the program, and still, you know, I've got this result in six months. I just want you to know that I was not perfect, and you don't have to be perfect. You know, just listen to download some of Doug Lyle's videos and just say, hey man, if you can. You're doing good if you can play a B game. If you watched episode six and you talk, he talks about the three traps after the pleasure trap. He says the pleasure trap is enough to sink your ship, but it gets worse. <laughs> you know, there's conservation of energy. There's you know, there's two other traps after that that can sink you. You try to juggle. You try to master, become a master at this, like Alan Goldhammer and Mark, of course, who was born into it. You try to master that coming from, you know, eating an omelet express before checking it, you know, it's it's too much. You'll fall into the other trap, the ego trap, you know. It's just, so give yourself a break. You know, I was talking to someone in our community, and I'll just end on this, uh, that how this path really came back to self-love and, uh, and wanting to live and connecting with people in a real, real way and where you... You see yourself in that other person, you know, reflected back. And, and it's such a beautiful way to relate. But I had asked her, she was struggling, and I said, have you ever, like, you know, when you're taking a shower or something, just find some place on your body that you just look at and you just, you just love you. I really like that, you know. I just really feel, feel that love. Um, I know it sounds kind of, hey, where's all the practical stuff? You're going to get that this whole weekend. What I'm going to tell you to make it stick is the inner journey. The inner journey of emotional intelligence and reconnection, reconnecting with your body, because that's what's gotten disconnected. That's for me what got me into this trouble, isolating, disconnecting, and and not being in touch with being a human being. So, and she's going to go do that exercise, and it's a good path to healing. So, thanks, Mark. So aren't we glad that we got him on our side? Oh, yeah. So John, did you tell people how they can get the I Thrive series and, and and the documentary series? You want to tell them how they can do well, that? You know, if if you think that this could inspire someone or yourself or someone that you know, um, and this is my life's work now. This is all I'm going to be doing. I just want to lead transformation with health transformation. You know, and if you want, if you're interested in it, we've, it's a nine-part documentary series. It's a, it's physical DVDs. It's all transcribed. There's also everything is online as well. And then all 55 of the hour-length interviews are also available online. They're transcribed. They're on MP3s. You can download PDFs. It's all there. Every bit of the, of the content is there. And there's a place where you can just kind of sign in the back if you're interested. Um, put your name and your email and your phone number. And, uh, and I'll get a hold of you and take care of you. And John is one of the most active guys on social media, so you'll follow his journey daily yeah. if, you, uh, if you connect with John. So one more time, a hand for John McMahon. <laughs> a couple small things. Um, there is a lady that lost a silver chain.